Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for the Papal State for EU4 1.35 Domination. So the Papal State is a nation that starts off located in Italy and obviously we are playing as the Pope over here. The Papal State is one of the most powerful nations that start off this small at the start of the game and are excellent national ideas such as plus one diplo rep and plus 25% religious unity, plus 5% discipline as a finisher, plus two tolerance of the true faith, plus 20% national attacks, minus 1% prestige decay minus 25 percent cost of fabricated claims plus 10 percent production efficiency plus one diplomatic free policies and minus 10 percent aggressive expansion impact paired with our amazing mission to rate here paired with the fact that we're pretty much always going to be the courier controller makes the papal state one of the most powerful nations in u4 to play by using this guide you will be expanding in italy and maybe playing a tall papal state run where you only control the region of italy maybe you only control the genoa and venice trade nodes maybe you're gonna go for the entire mediterranean try to take back the holy land or maybe you can even become a colonial nation the choices are endless and they're totally up to you and by using this guide you will learn how to do all of them and before we begin if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them let's take a look at what we need to do as the papal state all right all right here we are as the pope and of course we do need to get started by completing some of the missions right here this one requires us to have good relations with switzerland this one requires us to have good relations with lithuania and this one requires us to ally three catholic nations of course we're gonna do all of these three but we're not in a rush so first we're gonna go into our estates and you may notice that we're unique and that we have 50% crown land right at the start. I don't think any other nation has this. So with that out of the way, we can go ahead and summon the diet. You can choose whichever agenda is best for you. Next, we're going to give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council, along with religious culture and religious diplomats. Then we're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies and aristocratic counselors. And finally, we're going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board and indebted to the burghers. Next, we're going to go ahead and sell titles and seize land. Now it's time to rearrange our army a bit. We do start off with 14 force limit and we aren't making that much money right at the start. But no big deal, we can still have four more troops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hire the free company just like that. Next, we can take our boats over here and tell these two light ships to go ahead and protect trade in Genoa, but go home during war. And because we're gonna be expanding in Italy and we're not making that much money from trade right now, you can tell both of these merchants that are in Valencia and Alexandria to go to collect from Genoa and collect from Venice as well. This isn't for money-making purposes. Instead, when these guys are there, we're gonna tell them to establish communities. This will help with lowering aggressive expansion. Speaking of lowering aggressive expansion, of course, we do start off as the Curia Controller. And look at all of these awesome bonuses that we get from being the Curia Controller. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and invest as much as we can into remaining the Curia Controller. It's not going to be very good if someone else gets it. With that entire setup out of the way, you can go ahead and lower army maintenance and turn off your forts. And next, it's time to hire some advisors. Get a Diplo Rep or Improve Relations Level 1 Diplo Advisor. I do have a Diplo Rep guy right here, so I am going to hire him. And then get whichever Level 1 and my advisor you want. I'm going to get this National Arrest guy. And if you do get a National Arrest guy, you'll be able to take this decision right here. This is not necessary, you can get it whenever you hire that advisor. And then get a morale, discipline, fort defense, or national manpower level 1 mill advisor. I do have this morale guy, so I am gonna hire him. Next, it's time for some alliances. And as the papal state, you can ally pretty much any nation you want right at the start. But it is pretty important to go ahead and ally Austria, so I do recommend doing that right off the bat. And you'll probably also be able to ally France or Castile. I do recommend allying one of these two guys. It's totally up to you which nation you choose. When the diplomats are back, I recommend and allying one more nation over in Italy. It can be any nation you want, but preferably it should be one of Savoy or Milan since we're not gonna fight these nations that soon. So there you go. Go ahead and ally Austria, one of Savoy and Milan, and one of France and Castile. And at this point, it's also time to set some rivalries. Go ahead and rival two nations that have rivaled you. In my case, I'm gonna rival back Provence and Savoy right here since we are interested in their land and keep the third rival slot open. We're saving this for when Naples becomes independent. And speaking of Naples becoming independent right at the start, you should go ahead and send them a scornful insult. And there we go, that's your initial setup done. Now with these additional free diplomats, you can start improving relations with Switzerland and improving relations with Lithuania so we can complete these two missions right here. You may notice that after you unpause, you may be able to select a golden bull. And of course, this one gives you a Curia Powers discount. This one gives Absolutism and Drill Loss, 
don't use this one it's not very good this one gives institution embracement cost institution spread and cardinal spread institutions and this one gives a dev discount and tolerance of heathens don't choose any of them only after the renaissance spawns you should select this one right here or if you want to prevent the renaissance from spreading to other nations you can just select another one right away it's totally up to you if you want to help the other catholic nations or not at this point i'm improving with lithuania and switzerland for those missions and i'm improving with france so i can ally them and with this final diplomat i'm gonna go ahead and start spying on aragon in order to get a claim on naples and a couple of months or years after the game starts in my case right away one month after the game started you will get the event the neapolitan succession where aragon will let naples go free and this is precisely our first war now usually it happens later than this and you'll have a little bit more time to prepare but in my case it happened exactly one month after the game starts so after after that happens, Naples will become an independent nation. And at this point, you will also gain this event. Naples refuses to submit. You can select this first option right here and give France basically a PU CB on Naples. You can select the second option right here where we gain a subjugation CB on Naples and Naples hates us, or you can do nothing. You should select the second option right here where we gain a subjugation CB on Naples and they dislike us a bit. There we go. And if everything goes according to plan right here, Naples should go ahead and rival you because you send them a scornful insult and because of that subjugation CB you just gained on them. After this happens, you yourself will be able to rival Naples back. And this is precisely what we want to happen. And after this does happen, you should go ahead and go into the macro builder right here and into the papal actions and see which nations you can excommunicate. And if everything went well, you should be able to excommunicate Naples at this point. So go ahead and do that. Just like that, no nation will want to ally them and you'll probably catch them without any allies. In my case, they did manage to ally Ferrara, but it's really not a big deal. And after you've excommunicated Naples, it is time for your first war. So go ahead and raise army maintenance and raise your forts and hire a general. It's time to fight Naples. And once your army is right here and a month has passed, go ahead and declare war on Naples immediately with the excommunicated ruler CB for the conquest of Naples. If you weren't able to excommunicate them, don't worry, just declare with the subjugation CP. It will be regular aggressive expansion instead of 50%, but you're still gonna declare on them as soon as you can either way. Your first war is with Naples. Aragon lets them go free 99% of the time. If Aragon doesn't let them go free, just restart, one or two years have passed max. And there we go, there's our first war. They shouldn't have any strong allies at this point, like I said. In my case, they've only allied Ferrara. But in your case, they'll probably have no allies. So go ahead and beat Naples up. And after you beat up Naples, here's what I recommend doing. If you declare with the excommunication CB, which of course if everything worked out you should have, you should go ahead and take these provinces right here for yourself. If not, if you declare with the subjugation CB or with a regular claim and stuff like that, then I recommend taking one to four provinces. So maybe you could do something like this because it is going to be a lot of AE. This would be 26.6 with the regular CB. Or you could do something like this or you could do something like this maybe something like this it's totally up to you but make sure to not get more than around 40 ish aggressive expansion but if you did declare with the excommunication cb you should take a brutzi you should take this entire state and you should take this entire state that's it no money no war reps nothing like that and that's your first war done like this we've taken out a big chunk out of naples but they're still alive and we do plan on vassalizing them later on because they do have cores down here. If for some reason they stop existing in the meantime, well, we'll just try and release Sicily from Aragon. But either way, that's your first war done. During this point, or before this even happens, you could have fulfilled the conditions to take the mission from the Swiss Guard, which triggers this event, and gives you plus 10% mercenary discipline for 20 years. And there's the Swiss Guard event, you get the unique Swiss Guard mercenary company. And if you improve relations with Lithuania, you can take this mission right here, where Lithuania gets an event and they get missionary strength, which means they'll start converting their orthodox provinces. At this point, if you've also built up the force limit and not lost too much manpower, you'll be able to take this mission right here, which gives you a general with 60 tradition. Ideally, you do this before the war with Naples. And now that the war is done, I'm simply gonna go ahead and delete this Merc company. And now, I can also ally France. And there's the alliances sorted. After you get three allies, you'll of course be able to take this mission, where you gain 100 Diplo points. After you're done with your first war with Naples, this should happen sorta in the first five years of the game, it's time to go ahead and chill a little bit and see where we're gonna expand next. We're probably gonna start pushing into the Tuscan nations right here, so go ahead and start spying on whichever one of these guys you want. And you may notice that you can only spy on Siena since they're the only nation you border, but if you go into the Show Diplomatic Feedback tab, 
and set these provinces as provinces of interest, your subjects will spy on their border nations as well. At this point, you can try and complete this mission right here if none of the orders have rivaled you. In my case, they haven't, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. You should start improving relations with the Teutons, with the Livonians, and with the Knights as well. We'll try and complete this mission. It's not that important, but you should go ahead and try and do it. And with this other free diplomat, I'm going to improve relations with Outrage Country. You should do the same. While you're chilling, you can click this button a couple of times right here to get some papal influence invested. Now, at this point, you might notice that the nations we want to fight next are in the HRE, which means we can't fight them without fighting Austria and their allies. And at this point, you have two choices. You can either wait for 1460 until all of the guys that aren't allied to Austria in Italy leave the HRE, and in my case, all of them will leave because Austria is not allied to any of them, or you could join the HRE yourself and not have to wait for that. It's totally up to you. In my case, for demonstrative purposes, I am going to go ahead and join the HRE. As you can see, we need 178 relations with Austria, so I just need to improve with them a little bit. And don't worry about expanding. You can join the HRE with your original size and by taking one or two provinces from Naples or taking this many provinces from Naples. As we can see, it's still possible. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to stop spying on Siena and I'm going to start improving relations with Austria so I can join the HRE and fight some of these guys right here. Around this point, you can upgrade your light ship fleet a little bit well a couple more ships since we do start off with two subjects over here you can go ahead and give the nobility strong duchies if you want to it's not necessary but i'm gonna do it and once the renaissance spawns you may be lucky enough to spawn it yourself in my case it spawned over in venice so after this happens you can go ahead and select this golden bowl once you've improved relations up to 100 with the Teutons, the Livonians, and the Knights, if the nobles are influential enough, you will be able to take this mission. If not, I guess you'll just do it later. At this point, while I'm improving relations with Austria to join the HRE, I'm going to start spying on Siena and on Provence. You should go ahead and do the same. Once the Renaissance spawns and after you've gotten Tech 4 in every category, which I still haven't, but I'm still showing you this, you can go ahead and activate Encourage Development right here in your capital state of Lazio Umbria, and you can bump up Rome to 10 in every category. You won't have to do a lot of devving. This is to help speed up the spawning of the Renaissance a bit, but mostly to tick off the age objective for a 30 development city. So I'm just going to bump it up a couple of times, up to 10 in each category. I'm only going to click the admin one once I get admin Tech 4. And there we go. Now that I have enough relationships, with Austria, I can go ahead and join the HRE. This won't really help us out that much with anything else, but it will help us with fighting these nations before they leave the HRE. Like I said, you can join if you want to, or if you don't want to, you can just wait for all of these guys to leave. It's totally up to you. Either way, by joining the HRE, we don't get downgraded to a duchy rank, since the Pope is fixed to a kingdom rank. After your first war with Naples is done and you've chilled a bit, it is time to move on with your wars. And if you've joined the HRE, you can go ahead and fight some of these guys. If not, you should check to see if you can fight Provence. As we all know, they do start off allied with France, but in these latest updates, France always breaks that alliance with them because they do want that land. And Provence did just get beat up by Burgundy in my case, which would be a perfect time to strike. Of course, Provence will most likely have rivaled you right at the start, so at this point, before declaring on them with the regular claim that you've built up, you should check and see if you can go ahead and excommunicate them and take all of this land for much less aggressive expansion, just like we did with Naples. If you can't excommunicate them, don't worry, just declare it with a regular conquest CB. And let me see, in my case right here, I can excommunicate two nations, that's Burgundy and Provence, which is perfect, so I am going to go ahead and excommunicate Provence. And there we go. Now we just got that awesome CB for even less aggressive expansion. Remember, you only get this CB for provinces that you border. So if you excommunicate Burgundy, you won't be able to take land because you don't border them. Only other nations that border them will get that CB. So that's perfect. If you can do this, go ahead and declare in Provence. If not, if Provence is strong or something like that, you can go ahead and try and fight some of these nations over here. Siena or Florence. So there we go. There's my next war. I'm going to go ahead and declare in Provence right here for the conquest of this province. And I'm going to call in Milan to help me deal with Ferrara, because why not? And there we go, now that I have about 60-ish percent war score versus Provence and after I peaced out Ferrara, I can go ahead and peace out. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these three provinces, you should go ahead and do the same if you're fighting Provence, and look how little aggressive expansion that is, because we're using the Excommunicator Ruler CB, one of the most powerful conquest CBs in the game, if not the most powerful. And that's my war and your war with Provence done. If they're still your rival, you can keep going a little bit to humiliate them, which wouldn't be a bad idea. In fact, I'm going to do that myself. And there we go. Now my war with Provence is done. So these provinces, a humiliation, and then I'm going to take all of their money. And look at this point how much we've expanded. Of course, if you use the excommunication CB, 
This has almost no aggressive expansion, but we have so many provinces. Once your ruler dies, of course, hopefully you will get re-elected. The Curia Controller, I did. I had about 40 Papal Influence invested. You will be able to select another Golden Bull. If the Renaissance has spread enough, it's not a bad idea to choose this one for the dev discount. These other ones don't help us out that much at this point. Once you start wiping out your rivals, you do need to be pretty careful with your rival selection and try and get nations that you border so you can excommunicate them and get the excommunication CB on them. In my case, I'm going to rival Siena right here, which is right next to me. So hopefully we can excommunicate them as well. It will be pretty annoying fighting Siena in my case, since they're allied to Burgundy. For some reason, these two nations get pretty strong allies. Once you embrace the Renaissance, you can go ahead and sell it to someone. I am selling it to France right now. And once you do that, you will be able to take the mission found the Vatican Library, where this event happens. Basically, we get the Vatican Library, which will be constructed in Rome right here, and we can choose three different options. The first one will give us minus 5% admin tech cost and minus 2 national unrest. The second one gives us diplotech discount and plus 1 diplo rep, and the third one gives us Miltech Discount and Army Tradition from Battles. Honestly, all of these are really good and they're permanent modifiers. You can choose whichever one you want to. Of course, if you're focusing on expanding a lot, you could go with the first one right here for the Unrest or with this one for Army Tradition from Battles. If you're doing a tall-ish Pope run or something like that and you plan to have subjects, strong allies that'll help you out in wars, you can go with this option right here. Honestly, all of them are really good. You won't make a mistake with either one of them. I'm going to choose the Military Edition right here for the Miltech Discount and Army Tradition from Battles. For your Tier 2 government reform, you have a couple of choices right here. This first one isn't that good, so no need to pay attention. This one gives us plus 10% manpower recovery speed. This one isn't that good either. Then we have the mission to civilize for settler chance and native uprising chance. This is good for if you're going for a colonial pope. Then we have mission on the high seas for some naval related things. This one won't help us out that much either. Then we have the ballast mission. This one's not that good either. And then we have the commercial and the mission of protection. And here's what you should take according to what type of game you want to do. If you're planning on expanding a whole lot, basically taking over some stuff over here, maybe taking back the Holy Land or something like that, you can go for the mission of protection for missionaries and fort defense. You can either take that or the external mission. If you're doing a tall-ish papal state run where you plan on conquering all of Italy, maybe the Genoa and Venice trade nodes, something around here, you can go with the commercial mission for plus one merchants and plus 10% global trade power. It's totally up to you, but these three right here are the best ones in my opinion. If you're not colonizing, if you're colonizing, go with this one. I'm going to go with the commercial mission for merchant and global trade power. If you did the same, you can transfer from Valencia to Genoa. Around this point in the game, you'll probably also be able to take new burger loans, so you should go ahead and do that. There's indebted to the burgers, and I do recommend starting off by building some marketplaces, obviously in our capital of Rome in Naples, since you've taken it from Naples. I'm also going to build one right here in the province I just took from Provence, and I'm going to build one in my subject Urbino as well, because obviously we're going to be getting that province pretty soon. After that, you can go ahead and build a couple of churches. For your naval doctrine, right now, while there's still nations in Italy left to fight, you should go with Galley Combat Ability. Later, when you have dominant control over most of these trade nodes, you can swap to Merchant Navy for ship trade power. But for now, Galley Combat. And speaking of galleys, you do need to start building up that fleet at this point. After about 10 years have passed, you can go ahead and annex both of these subjects right here. So simply go ahead and give the nobility, the nobility integration policy, so you don't lose Diplorep when you annex them, and you can annex both of them at the same time, or one by one, the order really doesn't matter. At this point, I've annexed Perugia, and once a little bit of time has passed after your second war, you can go ahead and move on with your wars. By this point, your truce with Naples may be up, so you can go ahead and declare on them, or you can fight pretty much whichever nation you border, or you can over in Italy. In my case right here, Savoy, they got some strong allies, let's check Genoa, they got strong allies too, Luca, I don't have a conquest CB on them, Siena, they're allied to Burgundy, and let's check Florence right here, we actually can take on Florence, they're only allied to Bohemia. So that's my next war. Be careful when fighting Florence, their provinces are super high dev, and once again, always try to use the excommunication CB. In my case, I can't excommunicate anyone right now, I just did excommunicate Venice a while ago, but we'll be fighting them later on. So, it's Florence for now. And I'm gonna declare a conquest for Arezzo, because my subject Urbino here has a claim on it. And there we go. That's my third war started. Basically, we're fighting whichever nation over in Italy is the easiest to fight after we've taken care of Naples and one of Provence and Siena. Once 1460 hits the Shadow Kingdom event will fire, where basically the Italian nations can choose to leave the HRE. And every nation that isn't allied to Austria will leave. Let's once again check in my campaign. No other Italian nation is allied to Austria, so all of them are gonna leave. At this point, you can choose to leave or stay yourself. It really doesn't matter. Being in the HRE doesn't give us any penalties for now, although it will if we stop being allied to the Emperor. Like I said, we're always a kingdom, so we aren't downgraded to a duchy. 
when we join the HRE. Once you hit admin deck 5, it will be time for our first idea group, and I do recommend opening up with a military one. Of course, as a theocracy, we do have divine ideas right here, which aren't really that good, but you could lean into the whole thing. With dev discount, then devotion, fire damage received, morale damage received, cost of reducing war exhaustion, and a leader discount, culture conversion discount, and cost of enforcing religion through war, national unrest, manpower and true faith, which is pretty much all of your provinces, and prestige from land battles. And then you got some missionary strength, but what I recommend slightly more at this point is quality ideas. The combat ability for infantry and cavalry and artillery is super helpful along with the discipline. And we do need strong boats as well because we will be utilizing our navy quite heavily since we're playing in the Mediterranean. So quality ideas is a really good opener as the papal state, especially if you're leaning into the whole battle pope thing. So quality ideas for your first idea group. And there we go, there's the Shadow Kingdom, and at this point I'm gonna choose to remain the HRE, even though we take a 20 prestige hit. And there we go, now that I knocked out Bohemia, I can go ahead and peace out Florence. Be careful with Florence if you're not using the Excommunicator Ruler CB. These provinces are pretty high dev, and as you can see, full annexing Florence will give us a slightly more aggressive expansion. Of course, this is downplayed because we're the Curia Controller. And in my case, what I'm gonna do right here is not full annex them, and I'm gonna take Arezzo and Florence, and I'm gonna leave Pisa for later. No money, no war ups, there's really no need. And that's my third war done. At this point, I'm also going to annex my second starting vassal. By the time you're done with your third war, your truce with Naples should have expired, and you can choose to do the following two options with Naples. You can either continue to annex them, because they're still excommunicated and you'll still gain very little aggressive expansion from these provinces, or you can go ahead and subjugate them and make them your vassal in order to retake their course from Aragon. These are pretty valuable provinces down here, so if you can't excommunicate Aragon later on, it's a pretty good idea to reconquer Naples' cores and then just annex them. It's totally up to you which of these two options you do. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and declare on Naples right here with the excommunicated ruler CB because I might take some provinces from them, but my main goal is still to vassal them and then reconquer their course from Aragon. And there we go, there's my second war with Naples. Like I said, if you want you can full annex them, if you want you can vassalize them. And there we go, now my war with Naples is done, and like I said earlier you can do whatever you want to, in my case I'm gonna take Molise right here since it's a paper producing province so that's pretty nice, and then I'm also gonna vassalize them, and I'm gonna take all of their money, that's great, they still exist, and we can reconquer their course from Aragon. Aragon in my case they're allied to Austria and Genoa, but by using favors right here with Austria, I can make them break that alliance right here with Aragon and then we can simply declare on Aragon. This might be a little tougher if the Iberian wedding has already happened and you might have to fight a strong Ishka steel but it's still not going to be a problem with your other strong allies. And there we go, that's your second war with Naples done. Right now you're going to chill a little bit and then continue your conquest. By this point, you should have many more options to excommunicate. In my case, I can pop it off on Savoy, a nation which I border, so I'll gain that CB for Nizza, or on Venice, and I'll gain that CB for Ravenna and Modena right here, because they have expanded. Of course, if you do vassalize them, don't forget to lift that excommunication. For your first stage ability, you should of course take Justified Wars. There's even less aggressive expansion. And actually, there's the Iberian wedding right there which does make it harder for me to fight Aragon right here even though I won't have to make Austria break that alliance I'll still have to fight Castile who's only allied to Portugal so actually not that bad with France's help we should be able to do this in my case once you wrap up your second war with Naples and you've shilled a bit, you should once again go ahead and continue your conquests, ideally versus nations that you've excommunicated, still in the region of Italy. In my case right here, however, I'm going to declare on Bologna. This is for two reasons. By declaring on Bologna and taking this province, later when I excommunicate Venice, I'll have that CB for these three provinces that I border. And the second reason is they're allied to Siena. In this war, by fighting Siena, I can also make them break that alliance with Burgundy, which will make it easier for me to fight them later. So that's the reason why I'm declaring on Bologna right now. And there we go. There's my next war versus them. Try to find something like this, or like I said, fight nations you've excommunicated and that you border, or if not, just fight whoever is easiest. And now that we're done here, like I said, I am going to make Siena end their alliance with Burgundy. That's it. And now I'm going to go ahead and full annex Bologna. Perfect. Now when I excommunicate Venice, I'll gain a CB for these three provinces instead of just these two that I land border of. And there we go. Right now I can excommunicate Venice, which is perfect. I'll go ahead and do that. Now that we've gone ahead and done that, we can go ahead and declare on Venice, because if a nation is excommunicated, a lot of their allies won't be willing to defend them. In my case, the knights won't join, which is excellent, it's pretty annoying to siege them down, but Savoy will. And this is actually good, because Savoy is allied to England, which would make fighting them pretty annoying. So in this war, I'll make Savoy end their alliances with England, and maybe Venice too. 
and of course we'll take these three provinces from Venice, the provinces which we have this CB on. Later, we'll have it on this one. If we take that one, we'll have it on these two. You get the point, unless of course you unexcommunicate them. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and declare for Ferrara right here and call in Austria and Milan specifically to help out with Savoy. And there we go, there's my next war. Like I said, fight nations that you've excommunicated if there are such nations. If not, fight whoever is easiest. And once you defeat Venice, when you do fight them, it doesn't matter when that is. Of course, if you use the excommunicated ruler CB, you're gonna take the provinces for which you have that CB. And you could take a little extra by taking some of these provinces that they own right here in order for us to release the nation of Dalmatia and reconquer their course. In my case, let's see, I've occupied this one up here. So I am going to take this one and release Dalmatia from there. And then I'm also going to take war reps from Venice. And that's about enough. Later, they'll still be excommunicated. I'll do that same CB. I'll reconquer Dalmatia's course. We're not in a hurry here. And I'll also take all of their money. That's about enough for now. After you take six provinces in Emilia-Romagna or Marchi Abruzzo right here, you will be able to take the mission Patrimony of St. Peter, where we gain a permaclaim on Tuscany, Liguria, and Piedmont. Those are these areas right here. And keep in mind that when you excommunicate republics, such as Venice or Florence, for example, that CB will expire because they change rulers all the time. Basically, you excommunicate the ruler. So maybe me getting 20 aggressive expansion for these provinces was more than it usually would have been because the ruler wasn't excommunicated at the time of the peace. But now this new guy, he's excommunicated again. Either way, like I said, we are going to be releasing Dalmatia from whichever province you took over in this region. We can reconquer their course from Venice and from Hungary later. Of course, at this point, I am going to give the nobles strong duchies once again. For your tier 3 government reform, once again you have a couple of options. We got Education of the Theocrat right here, which gives new rulers will trigger an education event for future heirs. But basically we don't really have heirs as the Pope, but maybe the next Popes can still be educated, which will give them an additional monarch point and they live longer. Then you have this one, Education of the Court with Advisor Discounts, and this one, Education of the People with Idea Discounts and Institution Spread. These two are pretty good for playing tall, and this one right here gives us Missionary Strength, Max Absolutism, and Missionary Maintenance Discount. This one is pretty good if you're blobbing out. Since my campaign right here is focused on playing tall-ish, I'll go with the Advisor Discount. But all three of these are really good. Now that I've chilled a bit from my Conquest versus Venice, it is time for me to continue my wars. And if you also vassalize Naples and you're planning on reconquering their course from Aragon, this is a pretty good time to declare. And let's see if I want to declare an Aragon here for Naples' reconquest, both France and Austria will help me, which is excellent. And Castile is also involved in this war versus England, which of course isn't that difficult for them, but it's a perfect time to strike. So once again, after the initial few wars that we need to focus on after this point, we're focusing on fighting whoever we can. Like I said earlier, excommunicated nations, nations that are easy to fight, or maybe something like this, so we can get Naples' scores back. So there we go, I am going to declare an Aragon at this point for the reconquest of Messina, because it is the closest, and I am going to call in France and Austria. This of course wouldn't be possible without these two strong allies, it probably isn't possible with just Austria either if Castile does have Aragon but with France on your side you can take them down just like this. I am going to call on Austria to make it a little bit easier. And there's my next war started. Let's go get Naples' the scores back. Once you hit admin deck 7, it will be time for our second idea group, and I do recommend a money-making idea group as the second one after we opened up with quality. So for your second idea group, you could go with economic, even though it's not as good as it was before this latest update, but trade will help you out a massive amount when playing as the Pope and with the central position over in Italy. So that's what I do recommend. Trade ideas for your second idea group. We additionally have a trade efficiency policy with trade and quality. If of course you're not getting Naples' course back, you can just annex this for yourself or maybe fight Aragon once, take a province here, release Sicily, then reconquer Sicily's course. It's totally up to you. This is probably the best way to do it reconquering Naples' court. While I'm in this war, I am going to go ahead and take out some new burger loans and continue with the economic improvement of my nation. I can build a marketplace in Ferrara right here, which I haven't done yet, and then I'm going to get some production buildings going in the high-value trade good provinces. Even though this tooltip says we may not make that much money from it right now, of course later we will be doing so once we get the manufactories up, once autonomy is lowered, and stuff like that. At some point during the game, you will get the Decorate the Sistine Chapel event where you have a couple of options. This one gives us plus 0.1 yearly devotion and minus one national arrest. This one, same devotion plus 0.5 yearly prestige. This one, same devotion plus 10% improved relations. This one, same devotion and minus 5% idea cost. And this one, the same devotion and plus 1% missionary strength. 
all of these are really good choose whichever one you want based on what you're doing that campaign in my game right here i'm gonna hire michelangelo so you can get the idea discount and after beating up aragon or castile and aragon depending on the situation in your game here's what you're gonna do obviously if naples is your vassal you're gonna get all of their cores back to them or to sicily or just to yourself depending on what you're doing then i do recommend taking the island of sardinia as well and then you can call it right here but something else i recommend that you do is to take these two provinces right here or pretty much whichever province over in catalonia and valencia you want and this is for a very important reason which i'll tell you now of course you should take all of their money and that's your war with aragon or castile and aragon done now naples has all of their cores back if you had them as a vassal and you can go ahead and annex them you have sardinia and a few provinces over in the valencia trade note at this point what i recommend doing is that you release the nations of valencia and catalonia and later when you fight these guys again you can use these two nations to reconquer their cores up here and down here and these are very highly developed provinces in valencia and catalonia so reconquering these cores instead of just straight up conquering them will be a lot cheaper a lot less aggressive expansion and generally way better at this point you should have a subject over here in my case dalmatia ready to retake provinces in the ragusa trade node and two subjects over here in the valencia trade node ready to retake their cores once this war is done if you're even fighting it right now it's time to go back home and chill and see what we can do in italy and now because i'm ready to annex naples i once again give the nobles the nobility integration policy and start annexing naples once you build up your navy, you'll be able to take the mission build up a Roman navy for some naval tradition. At this point, I'm helping both my allies in separate wars. But additionally, I will go ahead and start my own war by declaring on Florence right here, and they have provinces I have claims on, and by co-belligerenting Padua up here, which has popped out of Venice when Venice lost to Hungary. And there we go. There's expansion in Italy. Aggressive expansion is non-existent, and you could be a lot faster than this in your expanding. I'm just going slower to make it easier for newer players to follow along. More experienced players, they would be a lot bigger by now. And that's a wrap on my war versus Florence and Padua. At this point, I'm still expanding in the easiest nations to fight in Italy, since I can't seem to excommunicate any big nations, or actually, well, Castile and the Isles aren't very relevant for now. <laughs> Either way, war with Florence and Padua is done. 30e, no risk of a coalition, that's that. Now that I've cored everything up, I'll go ahead and declare on Verona, which once again popped out of venice because they don't have any allies at this point easy wars and there we go right now i have also just annexed naples perfect we own a very very large portion of italy no other nation in italy can expand this quickly until 1490 maybe with the exception of saluzzo but with that you don't start off as the curia controller and you do have to invest quite heavily and there's the war with verona done if you're ever struggling with governing capacity like i am you can go ahead and give your least influential estate their land rights privilege for additional governing capacity in my case i would give it to the burgers right here but it's not that big of a deal because i'll gain additional gov cap by getting admin tech 8 right now and at admin tech 8 you can also build courthouses which you should do of course once you start bordering your northern italian ally that you've had since the start of the game in my case it's milan right here in your case it could be milan or savoy like i said at the start you can go ahead and dissolve your alliance with like i said once you start bordering them right now austria is calling me into a war versus hungary and of course, I do want to fight Hungary since Dalmatia has scores on them. So what I'm going to do before this war right here is set these Hungarian provinces right here as provinces of interest, basically the Dalmatian cores, and I'm going to focus on occupying them, and maybe Austria will give them to us. We're fighting them either way, not on our own terms, so why not try and get something out of it? And once I occupy them, I will transfer occupation over to Dalmatia. Once you get 500 ducats and have no loans, you'll probably do this mission earlier than me because I play so heavily with loans, but you'll take the mission rebuild the papal treasury. If the Curia treasury contains at least 2,000 ducats, you'll be able to restore Curia funding. Additionally, if you're going for a Catholic roleplay campaign, you could of course delay the spawning of the Protestant Reformation. I have 15,000 ducats right now in the Curia treasury, and you can spend that money to investigate heresy, which lowers reform desire, but then again, it grows 50% faster. In a regular game, you're not really too concerned with this, but if you're going for a roleplay type situation, or maybe a papal state one faith, you should definitely invest investigate Harris. And there we go, Austria pieced out Hungary, and actually we did get something, almost all of the Dalmatian cores back, with the exception of this one right here. 
awesome. This war wasn't for nothing. Right now, I can notice that my ally France won't defend Savoy, which they're also allied to, which is great. I won't even have to use favors to make them break that alliance with them. So right now, I'll go ahead and declare my next war versus Savoy for the conquest of Nizza. Regular conquest, I can't excommunicate anyone except for Portugal and Castile right now, so I'm just fighting all of these nations right here regularly. And now that I've defeated Savoy, I'll be taking all of the provinces that they own that I have claims on. Sure, this is quite a bit of AE and it says a coalition will form between Venice, Luca, and Genoa, but that's not possible. I have a truce with Venice and Luca, and either way, three nations can't form a coalition. You need four for that. And that's my war with Savoy for now done. I'm also interested in these two other provinces, which I'll be getting later. There we go. Right now, because I'm at peace, I'm gonna get some new burger loans, just like this, and they're pretty big right now. And with these burger loans, I'll upgrade every center of trade that I can. So, there's the one in Palermo, there's the one in Naples, there's the one in our capital, there's the one in Urbino, Florence, Pisa, and the one in Verona as well, along with the one here. Right now I can notice that I can diplo-vassalize some nations in Italy, and when you get big enough, if there are still one province miners left over here, you can do that yourself. So, we got Saluzzo right here, 13 dev, Luca 15 dev, Parma 16 dev, Mantua 22 dev, very high dev provinces that we would get quite a lot of aggressive expansion for. So, instead of having like seven nations left to fight in Italy, why not diplo vassalize all of these guys and just fight Genoa, Savoy, and Venice later on? If you can do something like this, do it. Sure, they'll take up a diplomatic slot and you may be over relations limit for a certain amount of time, but why not annex them basically for free with no aggressive expansion? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attempt to diplo vassalize all four of these nations. Saluzzo, Luca, Parma, and Mantua. And when attempting to do so, you should of course do all the things that are necessary to diplo vassalize, ally them, guarantee them, you can't royal marry them because they're the Pope, but improve relations, send them a gift, offer them military access, you could influence them, you could appoint a cardinal, all the things to increase their opinion of you. And there we go, after just a few months, I can diplo vassalize Saluzzo. I allied them, guaranteed them, improved relations with them, send them a gift, offer them military access, and I appointed a cardinal as well. Now I'll do the same with Parma, Luca, and Mantua. And right now I can also take the mission Crush the Italian Cities because we, or our subjects, own nine provinces in Tuscany, Liguria, or the Piedmont, and this mission gives us further claims on the Venice, Lombardy, and Po Valley areas. For your Tier 4 government reform, you should take Head of the Catholic Church. At this point, I can also go ahead and vassalize Parma, and I can also vassalize Mantua. I haven't done it with Luca yet because I can't appoint a cardinal in their province. After vassalizing a couple of these nations, I'm ready to move on with your wars. If you've done something like this as well, then you can move on with your wars as well. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and declare on Genoa. I'll call in France to help out a little bit. And now that I've defeated Genoa, let's see what we can take from them based on aggressive expansion. If I full annex them, no coalition will form, so that's excellent. And there we go, those provinces are now mine. Right now, Savoy is actually offering to sell me a province, the province of Navarra for 200 ducats. Something you rarely get, but of course I'll accept. And by around the 1500s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as the Pope with this new strategy that I've come up with by not rivaling a third rival right at the start, waiting to rival Naples once they break free, and then excommunicating them and fighting them. After that, after fighting Naples, you could have expanded either into Siena or into Provence, and after that, after taking care of those nations and hitting Naples for a second time, vassalizing them to reconquer their course versus Aragon, you should have been excommunicating nations left and right, of course, as long as you border them it really doesn't matter if you excommunicate someone like Castile or Portugal right now. You do need to border those nations so you can take their province for very, very little aggressive expansion. And after that, it was just pretty much opportunistic expansion over in Italy primarily. Like I said, your first priority being fighting nations you've excommunicated. But if you can't do that, you should have fought the easiest nations that you can fight or nations that you have claims on from your missions. And by this point, if you got the same number of nations to excommunicate like me, your game should look like mine does. If you had less nations to excommunicate, you'll probably have around five to 10 less provinces. And if you had even more nations to excommunicate than me, you could even own all of Italy by this point in time due to that massive aggressive expansion reduction. And of course, by this point in the game, you shouldn't have only been expanding through conquest. Like I said, it is pretty important when you fight Venice to take a province or two over here to release Dalmatia from and reconquer their cores. I still have one core left to go from the Ottomans. I'll take care of the Ottomans later, not in a rush. And of course, when you fought Aragon to take these provinces or to retake Naples' cores, you should have released Valencia and Catalonia. So later when you fight Aragon again, so you can reconquer their cores over here, which are super, super valuable provinces. And those should be your subjects that you aim to reconquer their cores. And like I said, later on, when you get bigger, you can diplo-vassalize a bunch of one province miners over in Northern Italy 
and then just annex them later on. I have Saluzzo, Parma, and Mentua right now. Luca, it looks like I won't be able to get them, so I'll just fight them regularly. And there we go. All I need is one more war versus Savoy, a war versus Luca, and two wars versus Venice right here, and we'll pretty much be done with Northern Italy, except the fact that I have to fight Austria for these two provinces. Maybe you won't be this unlucky, but you do need to get these as well. And after this point, your expansion goals should be the same as what we've been doing so far. You should aim to take care of the entire region of Italy, then the Genoa and Venice trade nodes, and after that, if you want to, you can expand into Valencia, into Ragusa, and of course, depending on what your goals are, you can go on to colonize, you can go over to reconquer stuff over here, flip it to Catholic, you can expand as much or as little as you want to, but this is a perfect setup and a perfect start as the Papal State. Of course, during this point, you shouldn't have only been expanding and vassalizing nations, you should have been focusing on the economy of your nation as well. By opening up with these idea groups right here, this is pretty heavily economically focused. I have four merchants right now, two guys are collecting in Genoa and Venice, still establishing communities. I'll only stop doing this once they take care of everyone in Italy, then they can maximize profit. Then this guy from Genoa can go and transfer from Tunis or something like that, and then I have a guy in Valencia and a guy in Ragusa, all transferring to Genoa. And of course, you should have been constructing buildings too. I have marketplaces in all of the center of street provinces and all of the centers of street are upgraded to level two. A bunch of production buildings in the high value trade good provinces, a bunch of churches. We are the papal state after all, and a couple of army buildings here and there as well, along with some courthouses, which we will need to keep our governing capacity down. Of course, there are monuments, a lot of them over in the Italy region. You will want to build up all of these. It's not a strict focus in the early game, but later, once you take care of all of Italy and when you start making some real money, you can upgrade all of them to tier three and all of them are really good and they'll help you out a ton but it's not a focus in the early game not while we're still building buildings and at this point i also have two fleets protecting trade one in genoa and one in venice that's about enough for now later you can send more to valencia ragusa or wherever you expand and i have this galleon transport fleet right here ready to move between islands of course later on once 10 years have passed you will go ahead and annex all of these one province miners that you've vassalized over in northern italy you will continue to conquer these nations right here and once you give dalmatia's cores back annex them maybe you can pop out serbia and bulgaria and byzantium over in the balkans force them to be catholic so they can convert for you as well reconquer all of this from the ottomans with just three releasable nations and of course once you get their cores back you can annex them once you get valencia and catalonia's cores back you can go ahead and annex them and that's how you'll proceed and once you do take these provinces from aragon right here you can also push into tunis if you want to expand over in this region and i do recommend trade companying the safi and tunis trade nodes if you're not planning on converting them into some sort of a role play type campaign this is what we took for our first two idea groups quality and trade for your third idea group i recommend another mill one maybe at this point you can go ahead and take divine if you're interested in some of these unique ideas right here that, that we have as a theocracy if not you can go quantity or offensive it's totally up to you for your fourth idea group if you're planning on expanding a whole lot and converting a whole lot you could of course go with religious for that missionary strength than the Dales Vault CB, which will come in excellently. But if not, if you're sticking to a smaller sort of expansion region, you can go with economic ideas or something like that. So quality and trade as your opener, then you can take quantity or offensive. And after that, you can take religious or economic. It's totally up to you. The next ideas depend on your expansion goals, so choose carefully. This is what we took for our first four government reforms. Of course, we do have the unique papacy tier one government reform with plus one tolerance of the true faith and prestige per development from missionary, along with a lot of clergy influence. But for tier 5, you have once again lots of choices depending on what your goals for the campaign are. You could go with military engineering, that's a pretty good one. No need to take any of the naval ones. And the other ones are pretty situational, focusing on mercenary and cavalry warfare and stuff like that. So go with one of these two first options right here. For tier 6, you should take this one so you can have a battle pope and the popes can actually become generals and manpower and land leader fire are excellent. For tier 7, if you're playing tallish, you can go with mercantile tithe. If not, you can go for divine nobility. For tier 8, you can embrace the economic theory or empower the burgers. For tier 9, I recommend taking combat heresy. For tier 10, go with one of these two. For tier 11, faith and power is extremely powerful. For tier 12, I recommend taking religious society or cultural safe haven. And for tier 13, I recommend taking the global crusade if you don't have religious ideas or one state under God. And like I said, around the 1500s, your realm should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash And if you want to to catch up on stuff from over there you can subscribe to the second channel link is in the description if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video